Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to continue talking about dynamics with rotational motion, but we're talking about things moving rotationally and translationally at the same time. So we kind of talked about moving translationally. It's when an object is sliding, rolling, or moving in any way, all parts of its mass has the same translational velocity. Uh, moving rotationally, when an object is rolling without slipping, the outer part of the object has the has a velocity tangential that is equal to the translational velocity. So what does that mean? That means let's say this car is going um, 30, well let's make that arrow a little smaller. Let's say this car is going 30 meters per second. Okay. What this is saying is the center of this wheel is going 30 meters per second, okay, translationally, but also the outer part of the wheel is going 30 meters per second, 30 meters per second, 30 meters per second, okay? So that's what it's saying. Um, I guess here's like kind of the key thing. Rolling without slipping means whatever the center of mass is moving, in this case, for example, 30 meters per second, the tangential velocity of the outside is going to be the same as whatever that translational velocity is. Hope that makes sense. We'll do some examples with it to make it more, make it make more sense. <laughs> All right. So when objects are slipping. So the phi diagram shows a tire slipping on the road. In this case, the translational velocity is not equal to uh, the radius times the angular velocity. So it's not equal because it is slipping. You know, we're not going to see too many problems like this, but it's good to know. So for example, let's say this car's tires are spinning really fast. They're going really fast, but it's just slipping. So the car is not moving. That means the translational velocity is zero. However, that also means that the velocity tangent is going to be a lot bigger. So in this case, it does have a, a tangent of velocity and it's very high, but even though its translational velocity is zero. So just a key thing to know is when it is slipping, the translational velocity is not equal to the tangential velocity on the outside. Okay, let's do a little bit of examples. A tire is rolling along a road without slipping with the velocity of v. A piece of tape is attached. A tape is attached to the tire. Uh, when the tape is uh, opposite the road at the top of the tire, its velocity is blank. All right, so we're saying there's like a piece of tape right here. Okay, a rolling without slipping. So let's say this thing is going 10 meters per second. Uh, its velocity is so. We should know if this is going without slipping, that means every part of this on the outside, the tangential velocity is going 10 meters per second. Okay, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. But uh, what is the top going to be going? So the tangential velocity at the top is also going to be 10 meters per second. However, when it's asking for its velocity, that means it's wanting to combine the velocity. So combine the tangential velocity with the uh, translational velocity. So it's going to be 10 plus 10. So like for all of these other arrows, we have like 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. But at the top, we're going to have 2 10 going directly to the right. So it's going to be 2v. Hope that makes sense. Watch it again if it doesn't. It, I know. It's a little confusing. Moving on. Uh, a uniform so uh, solid cylinder is being pulled horizontally by a for horizontal force B, as shown in the figure. The uh, force B allows the cylinder to move translationally, but what force allows the cylinder to move rotationally? Is it gravity? Is it force of static friction, force of kinetic friction, or just the force? So we should know that, let's say this thing was super, super, super slippery. It's ice. There's no friction on it. That means if it's being pulled on the center right here, it won't rotate at all. It'll just slide. So we should know that the reason this cylinder is going to rotate is because of friction. But the next part of the question is, is it static friction or kinetic friction? And I think most people will say, oh, it's kinetic friction because it's moving. However, that's incorrect. It's going to be static friction. 
And even though, yes, the the ball is or the cylinder is moving, it's not sliding. And kinetic friction has to do with sliding, grinding, and stuff like that. Slipping. It's not doing any of that. The static friction is it's using that. It's making it, allowing it to move. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much it. A little bit of a shorter lesson. Uh, next time we're going to be talking about energy and work when it comes to rotational motion. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.